to talk about the round ball code. Uh, the, the game I know is football, and our guest knows it is football too. He's from FNR, Football Nation Radio, Athos Syrianos. Good day, mate. Hello, George. Well, it's that part of the A-League season, about three matches, I think, still to go, of the home and away season, and then it's finals. What have you made of the, uh, the games thus far up until now? Some cracking games, George. Uh, if you're a big advocate for football in winter, you'd be uh, grinning from ear to ear at the moment. The intensity, the drama, it's all been spectacular. Have you, were you impressed with uh, Melbourne City's uh, game uh, last week? The game itself was superb. Uh, the story that both teams told was uh, quite captivating. City needing to win to wrap up top two, while Adelaide had to win at all cost to keep its season alive. As things ended up, George, dramatically two all with the Craig Anoon sent off as well, which might hurt City. Uh, we're, not, we're not quite sure how long the suspension will be, but uh, not ideal heading into finals. Yeah, straight red. Mm. You never want to see those at all. Now, uh, some interesting games last night. Uh, what did you make of those? Uh, some two, two very different games. We saw Western United and Perth uh, do battle. Uh, Western United is everyone's second favourite team at the moment. They're <laughs> so entertaining. Uh, Mark Rudin has, hasn't disguised the fact that he will go and attack teams. Um, it's the old case of if they score two, we'll score three and, and uh, as it goes. Perth Glory, meanwhile, they've been quite disappointing uh, since the restart. They've lost Diego Castro and their... Huge loss. Let's not underplay that. Yeah, well, he's arguably the best player in the competition. Yep. And they've struggled to really uh, find themselves and a bit of creativity going forward. They're, they're getting the ball in the box, but they're just not being very creative. And Western United uh, sat in there and just uh, blocked every opportunity that came their way. Um, as for Western's attack, uh, Besat Barisha scored a brace. He just keep scoring and he's quick. But when you've got a diamond in the rough, and they have, the man in the midfield, Diamante, he's, he's been a revelation for those that don't know him or didn't know him. And Australian uh, football could have had him two or three years ago, uh, but the FFA at the time thought, who is this guy? Well, we now know. We sh uh, Outstanding sure talent. Yes, and they've also got mm -hmm. another guy called Max Burgess, who uh, has slid under the radar, but has popped up with a few goals recently. And he will go unnoticed because Barisha and uh, Diamante will uh, take up most of the attention, but he is just as dangerous uh, in that attacking third. All right, so the A-League, the last three games to go, and then we've got the finals. Let's look overseas. Uh, over, over, overnight and again this morning, some extraordinary football played. Yes, the Champions League is coming thick and fast, as is the Europa League, George. I think this is as close to a Super League as we'll, as we'll ever get. All the domestic competitions are finished, and now it's all about continental football. And uh, there was certainly some uh, drama and heartbreak this morning, especially if you're an Atalanta fan. There, the, the side, everyone's back. They've gone on an, on an incredible fairy tale run in uh, Europe and in Italy, but they were undone in the they last into, three minutes uh, by they? PSG, Paris yeah, Saint-Germain. Mind you, Neymar, when you give him a moment and allow him to showcase his skills, and we can think whatever we like about Neymar, but when it comes to actual playing, he can do it, can't he? And PSG, this is the competition they crave. Uh, they win the uh, league on uh, title quite comfortably. It's, it's called automatic. Exactly. <laughs> you almost have to take that off them every season. But this is their best chance now uh, to actually progress in, a, in the Champions League. They will meet the winner of uh, Atlantic Madrid and uh, Leipzig. So uh, quite a, an even game and they'll certainly back themselves in that to, uh, to get to the final. And uh, just before we go, uh, we still haven't heard too much about uh, anything from the FFA regarding the game itself. And we're still not hearing about whether or not the A-League will be an independent uh, league. Uh, who's running the game at the moment? Can you give me a heads up? Well, that's, a, that's quite a complicated question. Uh, uh -huh. Greg O'Rourke is the, the head of uh, the A-League's division in the FFA, uh, but whether the, the competition has gone fully independent and uh, over to the clubs, I think uh, remains to be seen. Although I think by next season, they will be really keen to, to get that up and running. And there's one little bit I want to run past everyone, just in case they missed it. Um, and it's the last one, the last question I have for you. Is it true that Adelaide Reds even if they don't make the finals, will have to stay in their hub in New South Wales until the end of the finals. So they will have to stay in their hub until it is mathematically impossible for them not to make the finals. Oh, wow. Uh, so, or, yeah, mathematically impossible for them to make the finals. And it's almost impossible right now, huh? Yes, yeah, so... It West would take a couple of absurd results to get 
the result for them. Yes, so it? Western United would have to lose 15-0 in oh. both their games to for Adelaide to sneak back in on goal difference given they are equal on points. So a bit unlucky for Adelaide, but uh, it's the rules that they have to follow. Well, the Adelaide fans have watched their side play some outstanding stuff. Carl Viet mm. continues to, uh, to make a, a case for himself to be the new coach, and he is a great player. Make it happen, Red fans. <laughs> Uh, Carl Viet, your coach. Uh, Athos, as always, thank you very much for joining us on The Informer. Thanks, George.